Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be diving into the project that we're going to be using throughout this video. We can clone it from a repo or get started in the code sandbox. And we're going to even get an animation up and running just like that. So let's get going right now. Okay, so in this video, we're going to get started with our project, install some dependencies, and talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing. And we're going to even dive into some basics of Framer Motion. Now, Framer Motion, as you will see, is a very simple library to get up and running with. So I have a repo here that you can clone, and I will also have code sandbox links available in the description of this video if you prefer to work in a code sandbox to follow along maybe you don't have to install some things or clone a repo locally or maybe uh, you prefer to work in your own environment i prefer to work in my own environment so i'm going to take the clone method here i'm going to go ahead and copy this i'm going to head to my terminal and i'm going to do git clone and then paste in this repo and this is going to get our animating framer motion. So we're going to change directories and the name of it is animating, I believe animating react framer motion, long, long folder name. And from here, we're simply going to do npm install. No, why npm over yarn? Well, the, the whole business with yarn two has gotten me a little shook on using yarn for some of these examples. I wanna make sure that everybody can follow along. So we're gonna be using npm. I, I typically do use yarn in my own personal practice, but it's uh, yarn version one. And of course we are very close to the version two fiasco uh, that's been going on. So uh, to avoid getting into any confusion there, we'll just use NPM. Okay. This is just going to go ahead, install our dependencies. Now you might be wondering, what is this project? Well, this project is just to create react app. It's nothing too fancy. Uh, the only reason in fact, we're doing it at all this way is so that uh, we can both have the same starting off point, okay? I'm gonna do npm start or npm run, and here we go. So this is the project. I actually have this back here. So what is this project? Well, it's nothing really. It's four cards with images and a fake header and a fake little menu button and a headline that's a super cool and some card. Uh, these icons, these came from Icon 8. I'll have the link available in the description per their licensing agreement because uh, I did not create or buy these or anything. But I do wanted to have uh, some sort of really basic thing going here. You can see, hey there, it scales down. Okay, so here's our application. This is largely what we're going to be working with through the course of the series. I'm going to bump up the font size. I am going to be using Firefox for this series. I have really, really, really grown to love Firefox, especially their developer tools lately, uh, especially when it comes down to things like their layout. Okay, so this is our application, pretty cool stuff, uh, pretty easy. If we wanna open this inside of our editor, if you have the code command line tools, you can do code dot forward slash. This is going to open it in VS Code, which is going to be the text editor we are using for this series, okay? Now VS Code, my favorite text editor, this theme is Synth Wave, and uh, it looks pretty nice. So hopefully it looks nice to you in case you're wondering. And here is our application. So what does this thing come in with? Well, this comes with, well, an index.js, and this is the stuff you're used to seeing in a Create React app. app. And in addition to that, we have an app.js where we import our fancy images, where we import our menu SVG, our app.css, which really hardly contains any CSS, and we have our elements. Now, what's in here? Well, elements is simply just a several different styled components. Now, if you aren't used to using styled components, fear not. Basically, all you can think about these is, this is a container, it's basically a class, a div with a class name of container. You could think of it that way. If we head to elements.js, you can see that it's really just some CSS. Now, the, the process of this course, we're not gonna be spending very much time talking about styled components at all, other than how to get Framer Motion to work with them. But for the most part, we're going to be focused largely on the animating side of things. 
So this is the application. All of the CSS sort of lives in here as various little elements here. It's very minimal. We are using CSS variables. So if you have not seen this syntax, check it out. It's CSS custom properties. We have some videos on level up tutorials about that. We've just defined essentially five colors. That way it's a little cohesive looking. It's a little bit uh, more preparation than I'm used to doing in the design for these things, defining seven lines of CSS that is. But here we do, we have our application and we do want to get started with frame or motion. So let's talk a little bit about the 411. What is frame or motion? How are we going to be using it and what's some stuff we can do with it? And how do we get it installed in this application? Lots of questions there. So let's go ahead and we're going to head to framer.com forward slash motion. And this is where you're greeted with this lovely page where you'll get to see some really nice little examples of frame or motion in action. So let's check out what we can do with frame or motion. You can see these are some neat little animations back here that really give you a nice little view into what could happen. What's fun about these is when I'm not doing anything, I think they're on like a weird little loop here, but look at these animations. These are all created with frame or motion and they look fantastic. Uh, you can see here that we can even start really tweaking some values and experimenting with some props here as we have this. Let's go ahead and change this. Whoa, changing the X, changing the Y, changing the scale. And it all animates very lovely for us without us having to do anything very smooth. Okay, so you're going to be able to create stuff like this really super easily. Look at how many lines of code this is. Wow. Okay. So before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's keep looking. We can do simple gesture based things. Look at all this stuff. Whenever I click it, it says on tap on pan end, those kind of things. Very awesome. We have nice little animations where it can start and do a yo-yo for infinity, where it's going back and forth and just animating as if it's a thing. And a lot of these animations you'll notice are physics based. Uh, you'll see we have the type of spring. So if you come here looking for spring animations, especially physics based animations, then you are in the right place. Likewise, we also have the ability to orchestrate really complex animations with a single value change. Okay, one of my favorite things about frame motion, look at that, all with one single value change. Fantastic. I'm very excited to teach you some of this stuff. In addition, we also have the ability to use gestures on hover on tap. Let's click on tap. Boop. Pretty cool. Uh, we also have the easy ability to add dragability to things. We'll be able to create a drag and drop, which we're going to be doing in the series. And you have the ability to work with scroll position and SVG paths. So much, so much, so much more. So cool. Okay. So I'm a huge fan of frame or motion and I'm ready to get started. So I'm going to click get started down here at the bottom. And we're going to install frame or motion just by installing it at Framer hyphen motion. It's funny that you do the get started and it just gives you an overview before telling you how to install it. No biggie. Uh, NPM install Framer hyphen motion. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do NPM install install Framer hyphen motion like this. It's going to get this into our application. Now, we're going to want to confirm that we're all on the same versions of things. Okay. Chances are You've installed this. You've gotten this working at a different time than I have. However, we are in the version of 1.8.4. It looks just like this. Yours may be a minor version change. Who knows? You know, depending on how far in the future you're watching this, as long as this isn't like version two or some sort of breaking changes, you should be fine in terms of compatibility. If you want to follow along one to one exactly and know that everything's going to work, you can always just make sure you use these exact same versions. Otherwise, as long as you're in version one, you should be cruising. You should be OK. OK, so this is our application and we now have Framer Motion installed. Do we want to see how Framer Motion can work really quickly? Sure. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to uh, throw my code over to the right side of my screen here. I'm going to head to my not my index, my app.js. I always confuse that. And we're going to import motion from frame or motion. So this is going to be import and then in brackets motion from framer motion. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is scroll down here to our div and change this div from a div to a 
motion.div. Now I have an extension in VS Code that automatically changes the closing tag. You'll want to make sure the closing tag is also a motion.div. Save this. Obviously nothing's going to change here. But what were to happen if we were to come in here and say animate is equal to, and then we give this a property. Now the property I'm going to be using is scale. And scale is simply, let's just set this to be two. It's going to be two times larger. Keep in mind, this is the div that wraps the entire application. So the moment you hit save here, if you are following along, your application is going to balloon in size. Save this. Whoa. And it animates. There we go. Fantastic. Every single time I refresh the page, notice how it doesn't uh, do anything other than uh, just change the, the scale. In fact, your application still scrolls in the same way it would. We can't see our header or anything. If we were to check this out, the div says it has a CSS transform scale of two. You'll also see a neat little translate Z on here. That translate Z, make sure that this thing is GPU uh, usage instead of just a CPU usage for your animation, ultimately leading to a smoother animation here. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to be doing here in my, I think it's in my network tab, I'm going to make sure my disable cache is turned off. Sometimes if you have this checked, what it's going to lead to is more janky experience, specifically because it's reloading the images every time instead of caching them. Okay. So pretty cool here. Look at that. Okay. So this is framer motion, this lovely result here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that animate scale too, just so we have a decent looking application at the end of this video. There we go. Here is Framer Motion. I'm ready to get started with this. In fact, what we're going to be doing in the next few videos is learning some of the basics about how we use Framer Motion. You can see already we've been able to create an animation, right? It didn't give us a ton of control over it, but it did certainly give us a neat little example here. So we're going to be diving further into the mystery that is motion.div within our next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.